Good morning, everyone. On behalf of my team, thank you very much for this opportunity to participate in this session. Today, I'm going to present our experience with endoscopic stents in the management of complications after focal surgery. I don't have uh, any specific disclosure to mention before this presentation. Complications after gastrointestinal surgery are very uncommon. However, when we face these horrible situations, our patients can develop a wide range of complications and their mortality rates may increase. The spectrum of complications that are described in the current medical literature may range from one to 5%, and this uh, includes anastomotic leaks, postoperative bleeding, the development of fistulas strictures and sepsis processes. Traditional management approaches for these surgical complications are described such as open and laparoscopic approaches, nowadays the use of interventional radiologies. However, it's very important to keep in mind that those operations may represent at least a morbidity rate of 39%. That's why endoscopic staining is now an alternative that can potentially reduce the morbidity that is associate, associated with a second intervention. This study is representing our institutional experience for more than 10 years in two different countries, two different continents. We are analyzing patients that were treated in Cleveland Clinic, Ohio, Cleveland Clinic, Florida, and Cleveland Clinic, Abu Dhabi. This retrospective study was initially approved by our institutional review board, and we are analyzing patients who underwent endoscopic stent placement for complications after benign gastrointestinal surgery. This study was conducted between May 2009 and August 2019. Those patients were identified from our prospectively maintaining registry. Patients with cancer or another malignancies were excluded from this study. A total number of 90 patients were included in this cohort of patients with a main age of 45 years. Most of our patients were female, close to 71%, and the median time between the initial operation to the endoscopic stent placement was 28 days. In general, those patients had a sectable uh, status. Close to 90% of our patients had initially bariatric surgery procedures. This was led by the slick gastrectomy close to 52%, followed by ruin white gastro bypass with a 31%. And something that is very particular in this part of the world is the presence of one anastomosis gastro bypass that now is representing in our city is 6% of our patients. Among other surgical interventions in the gastrointestinal tract, including POEM, total gastrectomy for dysplasia, as well as this resection using endoscopic approaches. Regarding the symptomatology of those patients, most of our patients came to the emergency room with abdominal pain, fever, nausea, vomiting, and in less percentage, people refer chest pain and hematomesis. Indications for stain placement included leaks after the slick gastrectomy in a 37%, strictures after the slick gastrectomy, 16%, Gastrojejunal anastomosis leaks after ruined white gastric bypass 14%, and gastrojejunal strictures after ruined white gastric bypass 9%. In this series, I would like to highlight that two patients had uh, gastrojejunal anastomosis perforations after endoscopic dilatations, and one patient had a uh, upper GI bleeding after an endoscopic uh, procedure. A total number of 148 stents were deployed in this population of patients. 
the most common one was the partially covered metal stand, 105 stands, followed by fully covered metal stand. Another group of patients had the opportunity to receive a plastic pillar stands for patients. And in this subgroup of patients, we decided to separate and perform a different analysis for patients uh, had a plastic pillar double pigtail stands placement. Out of four patients, three had initially a slick gastrectomy and one patient had a one anastomosis gastric bypass. The successful rate of these stain placements was 75%, and only one patient required additional interventions. Postoperative outcomes are very encouraged. Symptom resolution was seen in at least 74% of those cases. Resolution of complications was identified in 71% of those patients. Following our institutional protocols and guidelines, we could achieve that at least 61 of our patients were able to reinitiate oral intake in less than 48 hours. And 28 patients representing 31% of our entire cohort had the need to have a second stand or additional reinterventions. Complications related with the stand placement uh, are described such as migration in a 6% intolerance after a stand placement, 5%, two patients had a upper GI bleeding, and one patient had a pneumonia after this procedure. The main uh, follow-up was 10 months, and the mortality rate was 0%. In conclusion, we believe that endoscopic stain placements result in a high rate of resolution of these kind of complications in our series is up to 71%. Time interval from the presentation of symptoms to stenting, as well as indication, may predict the overall success rate. Finally, new indications and stent technologies are evolving very fast, and we have to be prepared for the new opportunities that we are going to have in the future. And new technologies, including internal drainage and an appropriate selection of techniques, should be dictated by patient selection. Once again, we want to thank you, Sages, for this amazing opportunity to present our data despite of the current situations. Hopefully next year we will have the opportunity to meet in person and to spend time with our colleagues. Thank you so much for your attention. Have a wonderful day.